Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the last lap of build. And today we're going to talk about application lifecycle management using Microsoft Flow and PowerShell. Uh, so my name is Kent Weir. I'm a principal program manager on the Microsoft Flow product team. And joining me is Mehdi Slawi. I'm a program manager in the Power Apps and customer Power Apps and Flow and CDS customer success team. So, all right. So I'm going to start the session off by talking about application lifecycle management using PowerShell. Now, this is a, a feature that has been requested by customers, perhaps some of you that are in the audience. And the general theme is that people want more visibility into Power Apps and Flow consumption within the enterprise. So we've recently released a set of PowerShell commandlets. Uh, this was initially part of our GDPR. Um, release and support for that uh, regulation. And so what we've now done is made these PowerShell commandlets available for everyone for download at this specific link. And you can use these in your day-to-day -day operations of Power Apps and Flow. The, uh, some of the, the capabilities that are provided by using these PowerShell commandlets, including managing your environments and managing the roles and permissions for those environments. Similarly, you can also manage your Power Apps. You can manage who has access to specific Power Apps. And the same thing goes with Flow. And in the case of Flow, you also have the ability to enable or disable Flows. So you as an administrator, if you weren't happy about something, you would have the ability to go ahead and enable or disable those Flows if you required. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show a demo. And I'm going to show how you can actually take advantage of these tools today and actually build a, a Power BI desktop a PBIX file. And we're going to include one for download here. And how you can actually visualize all of this telemetry that is actually coming out of your Power Apps and Flow environments. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into that now. So when you go ahead and download the package from the, the web page previously, you're going to see uh, a series of different PowerShell commandlets. And we've also included an, addi an additional one for download today called tenant-wide app and flow usage. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and kick off right now. So naturally, I'm going to need to uh, provide my credentials for this. And so that's running. So this is going to run for about three minutes. Now, certainly, we don't need to watch the blinker while that occurs. So let me just actually flip over to the PowerShell itself. And if we take a look at the PowerShell, we're going to see um, basically some constants where we define the different types of files that are going to be outputted from this. So we're going to see a list of applications, in the case Power Apps. We're also going to see a list of Power Apps with their related permissions. And then similarly for Flow. Now, we're beyond some of the initial headers that we construct here. What we're going to go ahead and do is go out and call out to one of those PowerShell commandlets that I previously referenced. And in this case, it is the get at admin app command. And what this is going to do is then allow an administrator to go ahead and generate a list of all applications or all Power Apps within their specific tenants. From there, what we're going to do is then we're going to loop through each of those apps and through each of the connections within those apps in order to understand the different connectors that are involved in that application, and similarly, the permissions or who that connection has been shared with so that you get a list of users that are also using those connections. And then we're going to provide something very similar from a, a flow perspective as well. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at one of these output files, uh, this is an example of the flow one. And here we're going to see the environment that the flow belongs to. We're going to have the internal GUID, uh, the time that it was created and modified. Uh, naturally, we're going to want to have a user-friendly display name as part of that output. Uh, 
which is, which is this column E right here. And then probably most importantly for a lot of folks is the flow connections. And here we're going to see essentially a um, delimited list of connectors that were involved in that specific flow. So this is pretty cool and it's a step forward. It's going to give you visibility in terms of how people are using flow and power apps within your environment. The problem is, is that's not readily digestible. You can't really make a lot of sense by just scanning through a CSV file, especially if you have hundreds of flows or power apps within your environment. So to make things a little bit more digestible, we're going to use the power of, of Power BI. And uh, I'm a big fan of Power BI, and it's a great tool for visualizing the data. And in this case, we've got CSV files that naturally can be consumed or ingested into Power BI. We can actually use Power Query to perform some transformations on the data itself, which is what I've done here. So for example, we saw that we had a semicolon delimited list of connectors, uh, which isn't readily sort of digestible. Uh, so we need to break that apart and actually create a separate row for each one so that we can actually go ahead and inspect uh, the data itself. So in this specific example, um, I've got a test tenant where I've got four different environments that have been configured. Um, within these four different environments, we've got 22 different flows, and we've got 11 different connectors that have been used. Now, I can go ahead and slice and dice and actually see uh, the breakdown of how, where all of these assets are actually hosted by um, from an environment perspective. I also have the ability to go ahead and see who, is, who are my users that are actually involved in these flows or these power apps. In this case, we're talking about how many different users have access to these flows. So I can see in this case, this admin user has access, whether that be as an owner or as an, a contributor for 17 of these 22 flows. I can also go ahead and get a sense of when these flows were created and take advantage of Power BI with some of its slicing capabilities in order to reduce the time frame um, to understand exactly when these flows were actually created. So similarly, I could also use the data from the updated timestamp as well, if I was really interested in the frequency and the occurrence of an update that actually happened. Sorry. <laughs> um, so let's just flip over to Power Apps. And what we're going to see is we're going to see um, a very similar capability. We're using um, a different file. In this case, it's the Apps Permissions file. But I have the ability to see similar data. So I can see in this case, I've got five different environments across 28 different apps. And I've got th 13 different connectors being used. And what is also interesting within here, we'll see that there's different connectors being used than Flow. Uh, so as an administrator, this might be a, a prompt for you to take a look at your data loss prevention policies to better understand the usage of how people are actually using Power Apps and using Flow and then creating the right policies that line up for your organization. Uh, we also have the ability to determine the app access by user as well. So we can see once again, this admin user um, has access to a lot of apps, which is, is pretty natural, but we can see some of these other users don't have as much access. And then similarly, we can go ahead and define or understand when our apps were created and the related timelines around that. So while this is something that you can go ahead and, and try this out today, um, and I'll provide the, let me flip back to the slides. Uh, you can go ahead and, and download this package of this PowerShell script plus the PBIX uh, today, and you can go ahead and, and build this on your own and have this running um, you know, tonight if you wish. Uh, so I just want to make a call out as well. So James Olenek, he was the person that wrote this PowerShell script that you're going to download. Um, and uh, his team, in conjunction with Mehdi and, and a few others, were involved in the development of these different PowerShell scripts. Now, another thing that is coming from an admin perspective is we are providing some admin analytics, and those should show up within, uh, well, soon. And so that'll be like a managed experience where you'll be able to go ahead and see the um, analytics for a specific environment by yourself without having to actually run uh, PowerShell commandlets. Um, another option with this stuff is you can go ahead and schedule this stuff and actually have Power BI ingest this data through an on-premise data gateway if you wish as well. So with that said, I'm going to hand it over to Mehdi, and he's going to talk 
about um, other admin opportunities. All right, let me switch. Need a little bit more space. From the <laughs> Do you have the clicker? All right. So, uh, so what we have today is uh, is a is a flow uh, management connector. So what you, what you really uh, get out of uh, what you saw previously is really a set of command line. Uh, they allow you to do a lot today via script, via PowerShell script, but that's not the only way to interact with the administrative uh, APIs today. You could use uh, one of the existing connectors today. It does, uh, it does uh, a lot, actually, out of the box. So there are a lot of interesting... Uh, I'll just drive this. Thank you. Uh, so out of the so the, the flow management connector that you have today will allow you to do a lot of what you saw to the, uh, happening with the command line. Uh, you could create connection, create flow, get uh, get flow, get, get a bunch of uh, information about your flow and, and and basically functionality to administer your flows. So uh, so one of the uh, template that we have out of the box uh, that comes with the, uh, with flow. I'm gonna just switch to. Uh, is uh, all right. So we have a template here that that basically lists all of the. So just as an example of a flow using this uh, this functionality is the uh, list new Microsoft Flow connection. So what it does for you is just basically list all of the connection that your flows uh, have. So I'm gonna actually tr start with that, and I'm gonna just show a little bit uh, how uh, how it's set up. And as you can see here, you have a regular flow. You have a, a set of a recurrence that runs every day. Uh, you have, again, here the usage of that connector, the list API connector API. Uh, what it gives you is all of the connectors that are used in a particular environment. So you could set uh, any of your environment. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, say, uh, Power Apps, Power Apps, uh, or I, I guess let's use this one. Uh, let me make sure I have administrative right to that. So, uh, power ups, UAT, or even dev. Uh, basically, what you get here is a list of connectors. You are interested in filtering this information down to basically all of the, uh, all of the, um, let me, uh, you basically want to get all of the connectors that were created X number of days before today. So uh, every connector uh, will get all of the information you get uh, out of that connector uh, is the uh, the tick. Uh, basically, it's the uh, the time where the, the, that particular connector was created. Um, you compare that to uh, to basically uh, the today's day minus X number of days. In this case, just for uh, for simplicity, we have minus one day since it's occurring every day. So what the, this next step is going to do is basically filter out all of the connectors uh, that were you created over the last 24 hours. And then what we are going to do later on is basically cre create a report uh, out of that information, uh, an HTML report that contain all of the uh, re all of the details about which created create connector was created by by which person. So. So if I run that, and uh, just be for uh, simplicity or for t ease of time, we're gonna we're gonna get a report like this one, where you get the created date time uh, of a particular connector. You could add any information to your report, but in in essence, what you get out of these uh, connectors is just the ability to have much more uh, uh, interesting scenario from a management perspective. You can you can find out all of the flaws that were created by your users. Uh, you could find out which connectors they were used. Uh, again, similarly to the PowerShell, you can use a flow to give you notifications uh, uh, of, uh, of when certain events happened. So that's what we have today. Uh, coming real soon is the ability to do basically the same sort of uh, 
interesting flow with power apps. Uh, so today we don't have an, a connector out of the box, but I'm going to show a preview demo of what that looks like. Uh, but basically everything about your apps that you're creating in your environment, uh, listing all of your environment, uh, getting all of the app information that you have, uh, the creator of the, uh, of the app, the connectors that are used for an app, basically all sorts of information that you can get today out of the PowerShell, you could use a connector to get that same information. And the scenarios are, are, are unlimited. You can do... Uh, you could monitor for high usage of your app. You could uh, find out uh, what are the latest apps that were created. Uh, you could uh, create even apps that monitor uh, uh, like the more, most viral of your apps. So here's an example of that. Here you can see that uh, I'm using a an environment, again, get environment to get all of the environment I have in my, uh, similar exactly to the PowerShell command. Uh, I'm going through every single app, filtering all of the apps for the one that I'm interested in, in, in uh, collecting. In this particular case, again, I'm using the timestamp to filter all of the apps that I'm interested in looking at. So here again, I'm doing, uh, give me all of the apps that were created in, a, in all of my environments. Uh, so that I can see actually what's the latest, uh, latest uh, uh, apps created. So here's an example of our report. Again, this could be a much nicer looking report, but basically it tells you uh, those are all of the apps that were created in the specific uh, environments. So again, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the scenarios are multiple. Uh, you, could, uh, you could just basically go ahead and create uh, whatever you need today that is not out of the box in our admin center, for example. So the last thing I want to show again, uh, just to uh, wrap it up, we have uh, the use of this connector. You can actually create app as well, a power app, to monitor and manage your own environments and apps within those environments. This is a simple example of where I'm using a, a custom connector. And I can see here that I have a power apps environment and a power flows admin uh, connector that I, that I have. And I'm uh, basically listing out all of the, uh, all of the, uh, all of the environment that I have. And I can pick uh, any particular environment, find out all of the apps that I have in that environment. Uh, I can go ahead and delete it. I can do sharing. I can do approvals. Uh, you could imagine having multiple environments where your users are creating apps in one particular environment and you want to um, ensure that you have a way to review those apps and then publishing uh, and approving them and uh, publishing them in a different production environment, let's say. So that's, that's all I have. So I think let's, can we put it back on the uh, download page? Yeah. Is this, uh, so I, I guess uh, some key takeaways from this perspective is um, we do provide like graphical user interfaces for this. We have an admin center, we have a, a collapsed or unified admin center coming soon. Um, across the business application platform. But what we also see with our customers is that when you have a, a small number of services or assets, it's easy to, to manage through a GUI. But I think once you have more and more of these assets, you actually want to be able to programmatically access all of these different assets and to be able to manage them through something like PowerShell or through a management connector here. So what, that's really the, the goal of what these tools are. And uh, as we mentioned, the PowerShell is available today, uh, where you can go ahead and start today. And the, the additional management connector for Power Apps will be coming soon. So once again, I want to thank you all for joining our session. And enjoy the rest of your build.